Now, this video itself is going to be divided into like say two different sections. Section number one is just me giving you an overview of the growth hormone from my experiences dealing with other people. The second, the second section of the video that you're about to see is with someone named Steven who's been on MK677 for over a year. In fact, he's been on the longest of anybody I've ever seen. And he's the only person I know that's actually had his blood done before and during. And he's also even had the MK677 that he was doing tested at a laboratory to see if it was pure, which is, is pretty good. Now, you can check out Steve's Instagram. It's going to be in the description. Um, he's going to be talking for like 10 minutes. Do me a favor. Listen to it. I know that in general... On YouTube, we tend not to listen to videos in their entirety. In this case, please try to do that because you really want to understand this, getting a chance to watch somebody pick the brain of somebody who's been on something that not a lot of people have used for a year when most people haven't used it for that long can be very advantageous. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to talk about MK677 because apparently, according to the poll that I gave you, these are topics you really want to hear, at least you want to hear first. MK6, excuse me, MK677 technically is not a SARM, nor is it a actual pro-hormone or steroid. MK677 is a growth hormone-releasing peptide, something we would call a secretagogue. It goes into your body and tells your body to produce more growth hormone, and it does that by stimulating ghrelin, which is a neuropeptide in your body, that goes into your brain and stimulates parts of your brain that's going to produce more growth hormone, so it pulses all day long. But it pulses at super physiological levels so that you get a response. So for example, you could give something like MK677 to dwarf children, children with problems with the pituitary, and they would likely grow. Or at least as likely grow as they would, they would be as likely to grow as they would if they were receiving regular exogenous growth hormone, which I think is pretty neat actually. Now, I've seen about three kinds of people usually come in to get something like MK677. Before I go into that, I just want to state, <clears throat> I am not a doctor, nor am I a healthcare professional nor am I an expert in any of these topics, nor am I recommending that you take something like MK677 or any other kind of peptide. In fact, not only am I not recommending that you take it, I would advocate that you shouldn't take it or only take it under a doctor's supervision or after appropriate blood tests or some kind of weird, 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 I don't know, directive from God that, again, that you verify with the doctor or somebody else that's considered to be an expert in these matters. So, now that I've said that and I like to emphasize, emphasize that this is only for educational reasons and your own personal edification because we like to learn about certain things. For example, we might study about how torture has been used in different kinds of societies, but we would never do torture ourselves. So you might want to study about how to do things or how people do things like MK677 without actually, you know, using it. Anyway, the three kinds of people that, I come, that come in here oftentimes and they want to use MK677. One, people that are into anti-aging. People that are using it for wound healing because they believe that they're going to heal faster. And there's some people that have told me that I've used MK677 or MK677 combined with Carterin or, excuse me, not Carterin, but Osterin, and MK677 combined with, say, BPC157 to speed up the healing that they've had after surgery. Um, did that really work? I don't know. It's all anecdotal, but they thought it worked, so that's kind of interesting right there. The second kind of person that comes in here and gets this stuff usually is somebody who doesn't want to take an actual SARM and doesn't want to take an actual pro-hormone or steroid, and they believe since growth hormone, excuse me, since growth hormone itself is not one of those two substances, they can basically say that they haven't cheated yet, or whatever they did was somehow lesser, and they're no longer one of these evil people over there, or they're not one of these evil people over there that, 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 that are using these nasty evil things that they're not using because they're going to use the MK677 instead. I know that's kind of muddled, but that's kind of the muddled response that they give you when you go, well, why are you taking that instead of this? And is it in some ways growth hormone even more serious than taking some of these other things? But they have no good answer for you. Now, the third thing that you see is people that want to use them in conjunction with, usually, things like your pro-hormones or your SARMs or your anabolic androgenic steroids. And the reason why is when you take growth hormone with it, it, it dramatically increases the effect. It's like almost like throwing gasoline on a fire. Everything just flares up brighter. So not only do you make gains quicker because you're increasing the amount of satellite cells and you're also doing other little neat things with your body, is you're also getting more permanent gains. So for example, let's say you've been working out for 10 years or X amount of years and you've worked out naturally and then you worked out with androgens. You usually get to a point where your gains become really incremental even with the androgens themselves. So maybe you take something and you gain 10 pounds 
And then slowly over the period of six months to a year, you kind of go back down to your baseline. And I've seen this happen a thousand times. Well, if you add growth hormone to your cycle, you'll likely create a new set point. So maybe you're five, 10 pounds heavier than you would have been without the growth hormone, even when you're not taking anything at all. And for somebody who's been training for a long period of time, that's a pretty exciting result. For example, we had one person that used to come in here all the time. He's been training for over 30 years. He's 200, he was 245 pounds. And whenever he would take something, which he would do fairly frequently, he might put on about 10 pounds and then slowly over time go back to baseline. And now he would tend to look better incrementally better each time he did something like that where it seemed like he had a little bit more muscle mass, a little bit less body fat, but there still wasn't much of an increase in weight. He added the MK677 to his cycle of pro-hormones, rather a lot of pro-hormones, and he went all the way up to 270, which was unheard of for him, and when he finally came all the way back down, he was somewhere between 255 and 260 just walking around without anything else in his system and looked leaner than he did previously. And for somebody who's been training for a long period of time, that's quite, quite a big jump. Now that's after multiple cycles of doing this kind of stuff. But again, that's something that he hadn't gotten from, he hadn't gotten those results from things from before that. Um, side effects. Side effects increase with dose, but let's start with the basics. Some of the side effects that people, see, wow, can I say side effects one more time? Some of the side effects that people are gonna say are side effects are things that people find desirable also. For example, increased appetite. If you have trouble eating, or you don't get hungry very often, MK677 will often make you ravenous. In fact, if you take it in the morning, you're likely to be hungry all day long. Does it happen to everybody that takes it? Absolutely not. But does it happen to a significant percentage? It does, because ghrelin, the neuropeptide it's using or stimulating in the body to produce more growth hormone, is also associated with hunger. If you don't want to be hungry all day long, your best bet is to take it before you go to bed at night. Just take it before you go to sleep, sleep it off. That also kind of solves a secondary problem where some people who took it felt like they felt a little tired, almost as if their blood sugar was dropping. So if they took it in the morning, they felt off for a few hours. And if you have to go to work or do something interesting, that's not very advisable. So again, if you take it before you go to bed at night, you don't have to worry about that as much. Also, if you take it before you go to bed, you don't have to worry about frequency of taking it because it still has something like a 24, 25 hour half-life. So if you take it one time a day, it doesn't really make much of a difference. It's still going to be in your body all day long. Now, the other side effect that you have to think about is water retention. Water retention is the most common thing you hear about. Now, a certain degree of water retention from something like this, a lot of people will like it because it makes them look bigger, they're fuller, their muscles feel stronger, their joints feel kind of lubricated, and and that's good. Now, when you start increasing your dose to say 25 milligrams, which is the dose that they actually recommend most of the time, sometimes the water retention, especially in the beginning, can be kind of extreme. And if you've ever held a lot of body fat or you are holding a lot of body fat, then you might notice that the water weight's even more. Now, if you add that to an androgen, the water weight can get kind of ridiculous. We had one person come in here who took one of the pro-hormones that was stronger with MK677, and in four days, or at least less than a week, he put on close to 20 pounds, which you know is mostly going to be water weight. But it made him so uncomfortable that he just discontinued it and didn't want to try it again, even at a smaller dose. So the one thing I've been finding through the reading and talking to people was sometimes a smaller dose will work almost as well as a larger dose. So 12.5 milligrams might be almost as effective as 25 milligrams with less of the side effects. And 25 milligrams, again, was what they did most of the studies on. So 12.5 milligrams taking it will give you less appetite. It will also give you less water retention. So if you want to build up to the 25 milligram dose, you might want to start with 12.5 and then do that for a couple weeks and then work your way all the way up to 25 or just don't do that at all. Another thing too is, and a lot of people seem to get good results with this, if you take the MK677 for like say five days on, two days off with that break every week, again, you tend to hold less water. And, and you tend to feel a little bit better with it. So you might want to do that, and I see a lot of people actually doing that. The second thing is, and this is kind of a little bit different, is one of the side effects that could potentially be there is from the ghrelin. One of the ideas is the ghrelin, when it goes into your brain as a neuropeptide, it's actually making you more resistant to stress. But the way it's making you more resistant to stress, at least according to speculation, is it's actually kind of like pre-stressing your brain, which might not good, be good for you if you're doing it 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you know, every week after week after week for months. So it's something you might want to take a break from. Now, has there been any studies that said that GHRPs or the MK677 is going to bother your brain? No, but it's speculation by that just being a thing. So I'm telling you just so you're aware of it. Um, the only other side effect I've really seen and only saw once, and I'm just reading it to you because the gentleman brought to my attention was this. 
he had interocular pressure, basically pressure behind the eyes. And when he went to his doctor, the doctor thought that it could be MK677 because apparently growth hormone, exogenous growth hormone given to children for dwarfism can actually cause pressure around the eyes for whatever reason. And it goes away when you stop taking it, but still it's something that you, something you need to think about. Now, there's only one person I've ever seen that happen to personally, and I've never really read about it in the literature, although I have read about it when it comes to children and growth hormones. So there it is. They tell me, I tell you. I want to take a second and talk about growth hormones benefits as you hear in a generic sense. One, a better night's sleep. That's one of the things you hear right away. Two, increased utilization of fat in your body. Three, uh, some lean mass growth, especially in conjunction with something else. Four, it's supposed to prevent the breakdown of muscle mass under conditions of illness, conditions of age, and also conditions of excessive amounts of, say, cardio with, like, with like a lack of calories. Um, another thing it's supposed to do is improve your sleep. So I think I just mentioned sleep. Improve your ability to dream at night, believe it or not. And also just, in, 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 you know, for the purpose of what we're doing right now, increase wound healing. Um, that's about all I have for you right now. Okay, so in the meantime, um, I'm going to leave you now and then we're going to be talking to Steve. Thank you. Good night.